students, I'm going to continue with our reading of chapter five. This is part two of chapter five. And when we read previously, you'll remember that Dr. Carson um, they and his friends, well, his, his classmates would do this thing called capping and they would make fun of one another and you were supposed to be able to outcap somebody else. And at first, Dr. Carson didn't really participate in that, but then he chose to start being part of it. Um, and what happened was the boys kind of laid off of him a bit, but then he was doing it to other kids, and it's like he forgot how it felt to be made fun of so much. And so he was merciless with his making fun of other people. But the one thing that was still an issue is that he's very, very poor, and he doesn't want his classmates to know that he has to use food stamps to buy food. So that's where we're going to pick up. I could accept being poor, but I died a thousand deaths thinking that other kids would know it. If I had thought more logically about the food stamps, I would have realized that quite a few of my friends' families used them too. Yet every time I left the house with the stamps burning in my pocket, I worried that someone might see me or hear about my using food stamps and then talk about me. So far as I know, no one ever did. The ninth grade stands out as a pivotal time in my life. As an A student, I could stand up intellectually with the best, and I could hold my own with the best, or worst, of my classmates. It was a time of transition. I was leaving childhood and beginning to think seriously about the future, and especially my desire to be a doctor. By the time I hit the 10th grade, however, the peer pressure had gotten to be too much for me. Clothes were my biggest problem. I can't wear these pants, I'd tell mother. Everyone will laugh at me. Only stupid people laugh at what you wear, Benny, she'd say. Or, it's not what you're wearing that makes the difference. But mother, I'd plead. Everybody I know has better clothes than I do. Maybe so, she'd patiently tell me. I know a lot of people who dress better than I do, but that doesn't make them better. Just about every day, I begged and pressured my mother, insisting that I had to have the right kind of clothes, I knew exactly what I meant by the right kind. Italian knit shirts with suede fronts, silk pants, thick and thin silk socks, alligator shoes, stingy brim hats, leather jackets, and suede coats. I talked about those clothes constantly, and it seemed like I couldn't think about anything else. I had to have those clothes. I had to be like the in crowd. Mother was disappointed in me, and I knew it but all I could think of was my poor wardrobe and my need for acceptance. Instead of coming directly home after school and doing my homework, I played basketball. Sometimes I stayed out until 10 o'clock and a few times until 11. When I came home, I knew what to expect and I prepared myself to endure it. Benny, can't you see what you're doing to yourself? It's more than just disappointing me. You're going to ruin your life staying out all hours and begging for nothing but fine clothes. I'm not ruining my life, I insisted, because I didn't want to listen. I, could, I couldn't have heard anything because my immature mind focused on being like everybody else. I've been proud of you, Benny, she would say. You've worked hard. Don't lose all of that now. I'll keep on doing all right, I'd snap back. I'll be okay. Haven't I been bringing home good grades? She couldn't argue with me on that issue, but I know she worried. All right, son, she finally told me. Then, after weeks of my pleading for new clothes, mother said the words I wanted to hear. I'll try to get some of those fancy clothes for you. If that's what it takes to make you happy, you'll have them. They'll make me happy, I said. They will. It's hard for me to believe how insensitive I was back then. Without thinking about her needs... I let mother go without to buy me clothes that would help me dress like the in crowd, but I never had enough. Now I realize that no matter how many Italian shirts, leather jackets, or alligator shoes she bought, they would never have been enough. So to make to connect that to where we are today, that reminds me of um, the Jordans. The Jordans are uh, a big deal for young people to have, and some people can never have enough. Like some Parents will sacrifice paying bills and different things to get their children the things that they want. And then 
the children always want more and more and more. Um, I'm speaking from experience here. I have my Naomi and she's only seven years old, so she's not into Jordans or anything like that. But she is into dolls, uh, the LOLs, the LOL Playhouse, Barbies. And it's like she gets one thing and then she wants more and more and more. And as an only child, uh, my husband and I are, are able to get her some things, but I want her to be appreciative of what she has and not always want more and more and more. Uh, I think it's just something that we as young people go through. I really do. My grades dropped. Ah, I told you all when he said that he was in, got infected with the disease. I told you it wasn't a literal disease. It was the attitude of the other students, uh, his classmates, and I predicted that his grades were going to drop, and I was correct. I went from the top of the class to being a C student. Even worse, achieving only average grades didn't bother me because I was part of the in-group. I hung out with the popular guys. They invited me to their parties and jam sessions. And fun, I was having more fun than I'd ever had in my life because I was one of the guys. I just wasn't very happy. I had strayed from the important and basic values in my life. To explain that statement, I have to go back to my mother again and tell you about a visit from Mary Thomas. This lets me know that we are about to read a flashback. We're about to go into a flashback um, to see something that happened before that helps us to understand where he is coming from now. Okay, we'll pick this up with part three of our reading. <laughs> 